Hello and welcome again. Well, students, we were doing preparation of ADAD and ketones, and today we'll be doing another method of preparation that is from acid chlorides. Well, how can we prepare from acid chloride? I told you one thing that uh, ADAD ketone can be prepared by oxidation of alcohols or by reduction of acid or acid derivatives. So, if we talk about acid chlorides. Aldehydes and ketones they can be prepared by their reduction. So let us have a look uh, inside the preparation of aldehyde from acid chlorides. So first I'm writing by reduction. If I carry out reduction by reduction of acid chlorides, I will always get aldehydes. Now let us have a look at the reaction, how it happens. Suppose I have got an acid chloride like uh, RCOCl. I am reacting it with uh, 2 moles of nascent hydrogen. Now the question comes to our mind where from this nascent hydrogen is coming. This nascent hydrogen is actually coming by the reaction of molecular hydrogen with palladium in the presence of barium sulfate and sulfur. Instead of sulfur we can also use a derivative of sulfur that is quinoline. In boiling xylene. So boiling xylene is simply a solvent over here. As a result of this reaction we will get RCHO and along with that, we'll get HCl. Now, I'll tell you what the function of all these catalysts is. Palladium in this case is a catalyst. Being a strong catalyst, it can not only reduce acid chloride to aldehyde, it can further reduce it to alcohol or to alkanes. In order to prevent that further oxidation to alcohols or alkanes, we use poisons or poisoning reagents like barium sulfate or sulfur. So we can say that barium sulfate or sulfur are poisons. They reduce the catalytic property of palladium and permit it to reduce alkyl chloride or acid chloride, not alkyl chloride, acid chloride to aldehydes only, not further to alcohols or to alkanes. Now, boiling xylene is simply a solvent. So, it works as a solvent. Remember one thing, by this method you cannot prepare formaldehyde because if you use formyl chloride and uh, you react it with nascent hydrogen, you heat it, it's not going to react with nascent hydrogen. In fact, formyl chloride will undergo decomposition to HCl gas and carbon monoxide gas. So formaldehyde cannot be prepared by this method. Rest all aldehydes, no matter whether they are aliphatic or aromatic, you can prepare by this method. This reduction method is known as Rosenmund's reduction. So this is Rosenmund's reduction. Well, this is how we can prepare aldehydes from acid chloride by their reduction. We will see how we can prepare ketones from acid chloride. In that case, it is by reaction with dialkyl cadmium. If I talk about dialkyl cadmium, it is an organometallic. And like all other organometallic, the reaction of dialkyl cadmium is also carried out in the presence of dry ether. Now suppose I have got 2 moles of CH3COCl and I am reacting it with dialkyl cadmium, say diethyl cadmium, C2H5 volt twice CD, in the presence of dry ether. What will happen? CD will combine with Cl and it will come out as cadmium chloride. 
and you will get 2 moles of CH3, CO, C2, H5. That is butanone. This is what you are getting. So ketone you will get. Butanone you are getting. So this is how we can prepare aldehyde and ketones from acid chloride. Aldehydes by Rosenmund's reduction, ketones by reaction with dialkyl cadmium. After this, we'll move on to their preparation from alkyl benzene. When I'm saying alkyl benzene, I'm basically dealing with aromatic aldehyde of ketone. So I'll write it preparation of aromatic aldehyde or ketone so here we'll see preparation of aromatic aldehyde and ketone Well, as far preparation of aromatic aldehyde and ketone is concerned, first method I will tell you is from methyl benzene, very commonly you call it taurine. Methyl benzene or taurine. So, how we can prepare it from methyl benzene? The first one is by halogenation followed by hydrolysis now suppose I got tollen so this is I'm getting I have got a tollen I am reacting it with 2 moles of Cl2 in the presence of sunlight I told you this thing I taught you this thing in uh, alkyl halide and aryl halide that in the presence of sunlight substitution occurs free radical substitution will occur so 2H from CH3 and 2Cl they will come out as 2 moles of HCl you will get a compound like this that is CH Cl2 now we will react it with 2 moles of KOH 2K and 2Cl they will come out as 2KCl I will get a compound like this where I will have 2OH group on a single carbon atom in 11th standard, you have learned this thing that 2 OH group they are not stable on single carbon. So, due to steric repulsion, H2O will come out and you will get a compound like uh, this that is benzaldehyde. So, benzaldehyde is what you are getting. From methyl benzene, this was the first method by halogenation followed by hydrolysis. The second method is by reaction with by reaction with chromyl chloride. So we'll see how we can prepare from chromyl chloride. Now suppose this is the compound I have got that is CH3 I am reacting it with 2 moles of CrO2 Cl2 that is chromyl chloride. Chromyl chloride will undergo addition in tollen and will form a compound like CHOCrCl2OH. OCRCl2OH. So we can write whole twice also. This is a brown complex. This is a brown complex. 
Now if you react this brown complex with dilute acid it will undergo hydrolysis and will lead to the formation of benzaldehyde. So you will get benzaldehyde and this reaction is it starts reaction. So this is how you can prepare benzaldehyde. From toluene, the third method we have got is by acetic anhydride. So by reaction with acetic anhydride. Now suppose again I have got this compound that is toluene and I am reacting it with acetic anhydride. I will write that acetic anhydride in the expanded form so that you will be able to understand the reaction easily. So this is what I am writing. In the presence of Cr2O3, chromic oxide in this case is an oxidizing agent. So initially what happens, one oxygen from chromic oxide that is Cr2O3 will combine with two hydrogens and that will come out as H2O. Now since carbon has lost two hydrogen, it is ready to form two bonds because it has to complete its tetracovalency. So what will happen, the bond in acetic anhydride will break like this. So oxygen will combine with carbon. You will get compound like this. CH, this oxygen will form bond. So O, CO, CH3. Likewise, Cr2O3 will again donate one oxygen. That oxygen will combine with this acetyl group. So you will get O, CO, CH3. Again, I will uh, repeat this reaction. Initially, Cr2O3 will donate oxygen that will combine with two hydrogen. It will come out from here. It will come out as H2O. After that, one of the oxygen of anhydride will form bond with carbon. Here you can see it. Another group I have got is CH3CO that will gain one oxygen from Cr2O3 because it is an oxidizing agent that will form another group, another bond with the CH. Here you can see this is gem diacetate. This compound is then again reacted with dilute acid that is H2O in the presence of H positive. So H2O in the presence of H positive will break up into two moles of H positive or we will see, we will do one thing, we will break it in a different way. Two moles of or we can move from here also. Two moles of H positive and O2 negative. I told you one thing, see what I was about to do, I was about to break this water molecule in successive steps. Water molecule initially breaks into H positive and OH negative. Then OH negative will further break into O2 negative and H positive. That simply means that water molecule is going to give you 2 H positive. Those 2 H positive ions will combine with this group, one with this, another with this. So both of them, they will come out as 2 moles of CH3COOH. The oxygen from water molecule will combine with the CH and will lead to the formation of benzaldehyde, that is CHO. Benzaldehyde you will get. So this is how you can prepare benzaldehyde from uh, methyl benzene. Again, one more recapitulation of this. How you can prepare from methyl benzene? By halogenation followed by hydrolysis. Second is by reaction with chromyl chloride. It will form brown complex that is Itard's reaction. After that, by acetic anhydride. So acetic anhydride with chromic oxide will form gem diacetate, which on hydrolysis will give you benzaldehyde. So this is all about the method of preparation from methyl benzene. So this was the first method.
Second method, you people know it very well, that is by Friedel Craft Acylation. You carry out Friedel Craft Acylation of any aromatic compound, any benzene derivative, you end up with a ketone. Suppose I have got a compound like simply I am taking a benzene. Instead of benzene, you can also take chlorobenzene or phenol or aniline, anything. And you reacted with RCOCl in the presence of AlCl3. You will get a compound like this that is COR plus HCl. So, by Friedel Craft acylation, you will end up with a ketone. Next, we did. The next reaction which I am telling you, we have already done that in halogen derivatives. So the third one is by Reimer Timon reaction. By Reimer Timon reaction. We have done this in the properties of chloroform. Just a briefing. Here in this case, suppose you got phenol and you are reacting it with CHCl3 that is chloroform. In the presence of KOH, you will get salicylaldehyde that is ortho hydroxy. Benzaldehyde. Ortho hydroxy benzaldehyde is what you will get. Very commonly it is known as salicylaldehyde. So, Riemer reaction is another reaction which you can use. After that is Kolb's reaction. So, fourth we are taking. Well, in this case, we simply react a benzene molecule with carbon monoxide in the presence of AlCl3 and HCl. It will get added to the benzene ring and you will get compound CHO that is benzaldehyde. Please do remember that in some of the books, it is means some pressure is applied like uh, 4 to 7 atmospheric pressure is also written. So if you apply this pressure, the reaction becomes more spontaneous, it becomes easier. So this is all about method of preparation of aliphatic and aromatic aldehyde and ketones. Now since we have finished up with the preparation part, the next thing we have got is the properties. We will see the properties. Well, as far the properties of aldehyde and ketones are concerned, they are very important because you have got large number of naming reactions in them. Most of the naming reactions, they come from the, this part. I give you one example like DNP test, like you talk about uh, addition of NaHSO3, that is a characteristic reaction of aldehyde and ketones. You talk about Clemenson's reduction, wall kishner redu reduction, you talk about talk about aldol condensation, Kenizaro's reaction, intermolecular, intramolecular Kenizaro's reaction. So you got plenty of reactions like um, silver mirror test, filling solution test, filling solution and uh, Benedict solution. So all these on maximum of the naming reactions, they are from the properties of ADN and ketones. So kindly pay attention to this. So next we are starting is the chemical properties of ADNs and ketones. chemical properties chemical properties well, uh, before starting with the chemical properties, I would like to show you the structure of aldehyde and ketones. If you see the basic structure of aldehyde and ketones is like this. 
they have a carbonyl group so in carbonyl group what happens the pi electrons they move toward oxygen because oxygen is more electron negative so very often it happens that the pi electron they move toward oxygen oxygen acquires a negative charge and carbon acquires a positive charge since carbon has got a positive charge so it becomes easier for a nucleophile to attack on this carbon in halogen halogen derivative we have already done nucleophilic substitution reaction because halogen derivatives they have means in halogen derivatives carbon has got a single bond that is a sigma bond so in halogen derivatives what was happening when the nucleophile was attacking on a carbocation the halogen has to leave the system that's why the common reaction of halogen derivatives was nucleophilic substitution reaction whereas in this case you will see there is a double bond that's a sigma and a pi bond between carbon and oxygen double bond they does not undergo substitution in fact very correctly they undergo addition reaction so here in this case when we see there is a positive charge on the carbon that is we have got a carbocation no doubt the nucleophile will attack on that carbon but it will not undergo nucleophilic substitution in fact it will undergo nucleophilic addition reaction that's why this is a very common reaction of adiers and ketones so the reactions which we will do here i tell you the first one is nucleophilic substitution second is nucleophilic well uh, a small rectification my dear students substitution was in halogen derivatives this is what i taught you here in this case it is not substitution very correctly it is addition again in halogen derivatives there was a single bond between carbon and halogen so in order to form a bond when a nucleophile attacks on the carbocation the bond between carbon and halogen has to break so in alkyl halide the common reaction is nucleophilic substitution whereas in adiate and ketone the common reaction is nucleophilic addition i'm extremely sorry that i wrote um, nucleophilic substitution the reaction is nucleophilic addition nucleophilic addition reaction next one is nucleophilic addition followed by elimination of water molecule third will do their a reduction reaction fourth will do their oxidation reaction fifth will do their reaction with a base so let us start with the first type of reaction well before starting with the reaction i would like to tell you one thing we'll see the reactivity reactivity in nucleophilic addition reaction in both type of reactions i am talking first and second nucleophilic addition and nucleophilic addition followed by elimination of water molecule now let us have a look at uh, some of the aldehyde and ketone here i have got formaldehyde then i have any other aldehyde rcho then i have a ketone molecule and suppose I, here i have got a nucleophile which is ready to attack on carbocation Now what will happen? Now when I am talking about ketone, the pi electrons will move toward oxygen, so oxygen will become negative and carbon will acquire a positive charge. Nucleophile will attack on this carbocation, but the tendency to attack on this carbocation is quite lesser. It is because the alkyl group has got plus I effect, so it will donate electron. This alkyl group will also donate electron. as a result of that the positive charge on carbocation will become weaker so it becomes difficult for a nucleophile to attack on this carbocation now if we talk about any other aldehyde like in this case 
pi electron will move toward oxygen oxygen will become negative carbon will acquire a positive charge here in this case we got only one alkyl group so although this alkyl group will show some plus i effect but still we have some positive charge so it becomes easier for a nucleophile to attack now when i talk about formaldehyde in formaldehyde pi electron will move toward oxygen that will become negative carbon will acquire a positive charge we know that hydrogen does not have any plus i effect so hydrogen is not going to donate any electron so the positive charge on carbocation will remain intact it becomes easier for a nucleophile to attack that means if i talk about reactivity formaldehyde will be most reactive than any other radiate it will be more reactive than ketones my dear students based on this i would like to tell you there's a question given in your textbook like uh, the question states that cyclohexanone reacts with hcn to form cyanohydrin this is a exercise question so very easily it can form cyanohydrin how it is happening actually pi electrons are moving toward oxygen so oxygen will become negative this carbon will acquire a positive charge h positive will attack on oxygen cn negative will attack on this carbon leading to the formation of cyanohydrin but the question says if we have got a compound like Two comma two comma six trimethyl cyclohexanone, and we reacted with HCN. Then there is no reaction. Why there is no reaction? Well, the methyl group in this case is electron donating. So these methyl group they will donate electrons, and when they will donate electron, the positive charge on this carbocation will become very weak. Hence, it becomes difficult for CN negative to attack. Therefore, it will not undergo addition reaction to form cyanohydrin. So, this is in accordance with what I taught you that ketones they are least reactive in nucleophilic addition reaction, aldehydes they are more reactive, and formaldehyde is most reactive. So, this is how the reactivity it proceeds toward nucleophilic addition reaction in aldehyde and ketones. So this is all about the reactivity of aldehyde and ketones towards nucleophilic substitution reaction, nucleophilic addition reaction. Now what we'll do, we'll start with the first type of property that is uh, nucleophilic addition reactions. Nucleophilic addition reactions. Well, in this, these reactions, first we'll see addition of hydrogen cyanide. Now, suppose this is the carbonyl group I've got of aldehyde and ketone. I'm reacting it with HCN. As I have already told you that HCN will break up into H positive and CN negative. So CN negative is a nucleophile in this case. The pi electron will move toward oxygen because it is more electronegative. So due to electromeric, they will move toward oxygen. Carbon will acquire a positive charge. CN negative will attack on this carbon leading to the formation of a compound COHCN. This compound is a cyano. Hydrin. So cyanohydrin is what we get. Second we'll see. Second is the addition of addition of alcohols. So we'll see what happens when we add alcohol. On adding alcohols, we get either acetal or ketal, depending upon whether we have got aldehyde or ketone. Like here in this case, this is the carbonyl group I have got. I am reacting it with 
ROH that will break up into H positive and OR negative. Pi electron will come toward oxygen that will become negative. Carbon will require a positive charge. So the nucleophile is OR negative that is alkoxide ion. I will get a compound OH OR. This is a this is a ether which has got a OH group also attached to it. It will again react with another another molecule of alcohol. So OH from here and H positive from here will come out as H2O. You will get compound OR OR. Well, this compound is known as acetyl. If you have prepared it from aldehyde or a ketyl if you prepared it from a ketone this compound is half acetyl or half ketyl that's why it is hemiacetyl or hemiketyl depending upon whether you got uh, you are preparing it from aldehyde or ketone so this is how it proceeds. You can get cyclic uh, acetals and ketals also. I give you one example for that. Suppose you have got a compound like this and you are reacting it with uh, glycol that is ethane 1,2 diol. In this case the two hydrogens will combine with oxygen and they will come out as H2O. You will get a compound O CH2 CH2 O CH2 So this is cyclic acetyl or ketyl you will get depending upon whether you have taken aldehyde or ketone. Next reaction is addition of Grignard's region that is RMGX. Addition of Grignard's reagent So addition of Grignard's reagent When we talk about addition of Grignard's reagent We will not do it here because we have already done this in the Preparation of alcohols From aldehydes and ketones so I'll recapitulate that for you in that I taught you one thing that if you reduce aldehyde or ketone by reduction of aldehyde you will get primary alcohol by reduction of ketone you will get secondary alcohol but you will not get tertiary alcohol and if you want to get a tertiary alcohol from aldehyde and ketone you have to react them with Grignard's reagent Formaldehyde on reaction with Grignard's reagent will give you primary alcohol. Any other aldehyde on reaction with Grignard's reagent will give you secondary alcohol. And ketones on reaction with Grignard's reagent will give you 3 degree alcohol. So this topic we have already done. This is there in the preparation of alcohols and alcohols from Grignard's, uh, from aldehyde and ketones. You can see it there if you want to revise this reaction. Last one is addition of addition of sodium by sulfide NaHSO3 my dear students this reaction is used as a test to detect the presence of aldehydes and ketones both aldehydes and ketones they undergo addition reaction with NaHSO3 so if I talk about NaHSO3 that will break up into Na positive and HSO3 negative HSO3 negative Now in this case the pi electron will move toward oxygen, oxygen will become negative, carbon will acquire a positive charge. So HSO3 negative will attack on carbon that will lead to the formation of SO3H that is sulfonic acid group. And here you will have ONA. We know that alkoxide ion is less stable and sulfonic acid has a tendency of donating H positive ion. So what will happen H positive ion will replace this Na positive and Na positive will come here. This is proton transfer.
सो प्रोटॉन ट्रांसफर विल अकर यूल गेट कंपाउंड ओ एच एसओ थ्री एन ए प्लीज डू रिमेम्बर दिस थिंग दिस टाइप ऑफ एडिशन रिएक्शन इज करेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ एडियड एंड कीटोन सो मेनी टाइम यूल कम अक्रॉस सिचुएशन वेर इन अ क्वेश्चन अ कंपाउंड इज गिवन टू यू उस मॉलिक्यूलर फॉर्मूला कैन बी एनीथिंग लाइक सी एक्स एच वाई ओ वेन यूल सी दैट देर इज अ ऑक्सीजन सिंगल ऑक्सीजन द परसेप्शन यूल गेट इज इट कैन बी आईदर एन आल्कोहल और एन ईथर और एन एडियड और कीटोन बट इफ इट इज रिटर्न दैट इट गिवस इट फॉर्म्स एन एडिशनल प्रोडक्ट विथ सोडियम hydrogen sulfide that means it is neither an alcohol nor an ether it is either an aldehyde or a ketone so this is a characteristic reaction of aldehyde and ketones that they form additional complex with sodium bisulfide so please do remember this thing and in today's class we'll do only this stuff i think these reactions they are enough to re revise or to remember in the next class what we'll be doing will be doing nucleophilic addition followed by elimination of water molecule oxidation oxidation reactions they are again very important like in this in this case the characteristic reaction of uh, aldehyde and ketone is nahso3 so if it is forming an additional compound with nahso3 that means it is either an aldehyde or a ketone the next question comes to our mind how will determine whether it is an aldehyde or a ketone that test will come in the oxidation reactions either by tolens reagent or by felling solution or benedict solution that will come there so that will have a test to differentiate between aldehyde and ketones in oxidation then very important reaction is the reaction with bases that is alkali so this is all for today's class again i'll request you one thing that to get all the lectures on time and notifications please do subscribe my channel and please do press the bell icon thank you very much Thanks a lot.